Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's special Kativ Autodesk Virtual Academy. I'm Nigel Umbayek, your host for today and all days. So uh, today we have a great webcast. Uh, it's going to be What's New in Autodesk Inventor 2019. So every year for the last, this is our third year now, I guess, so the last three years, we've been doing What's New series on, uh, you know, the auto our favorite Autodesk products, things like AutoCAD, Vault, and Inventor. Um, this year is no different. So if you missed it last week, last week we were joined by Irvin Hayes Jr., product manager over at Autodesk on the Vault side. Um, and he showed us some of the new functionality and features in Autodesk Vault. Um, this week, we're going to be going over what's new in Autodesk Inventor 2019. And we have special guest, and uh, I guess guest for all of the what's news for Inventor, uh, product manager at Autodesk, Lauren Welch. How's it going, Lauren? It's going well, Nigel. Thank you for having us on. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you for being here. So Lauren's done, I want to say, about half a dozen of these webcasts, whether it's um, the, you know, the RTM releases, so 2016, 17, 18, 19, um, or some of the dot releases in larger service packs, right? So things like 2018.1, dot two. Lauren's been doing those webcasts for us as well and getting us the most up-to-date information on uh, what they've included in Autodesk Inventor, um, as well as some of the other products too. So definitely thank you for being here for that. <clears throat> Looks like uh, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and type them into the GoToWebinar chat panel at any time. Uh, we'll definitely answer those either during the session or at the dedicated Q&A at the end, um, whatever you know is more uh, applicable at that moment. But <clears throat> with that, I think uh, we can go ahead, go ahead and get started. I've seen some of this stuff in 2019 Inventor. It's super awesome. We'll answer your questions. We'll tell you how to get it, so on and so forth. So definitely um, hope that everyone's ready for the, the ride for the next you know 45 or so minutes. And uh, I'll go ahead and pass it on to Lauren. Anything else to add before we get started? No, I think we're good to go. Awesome. Cool. Uh, let's, uh, let's get going, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. All right. Thank you. So thanks, Nigel, and, and thanks, everybody, for joining uh, today's Autodesk Virtual Academy, um, talking about what's new in Autodesk Inventor 2019. So as Nigel had mentioned, um, if you have any questions or comments as you're going through, as I'm going through the content, by all means, please top them, type them into the uh, question panel with GoToWebinar. Um, also on the webinar is, is Chris Hall. He's another product manager on the Inventor team here at Autodesk. So we'll definitely make sure we're getting those questions answered either throughout the webinar um, or, of course, with Q&A time at the end. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and, and dive in. So to, to start with, when we talk about Inventor 2019, we're going to talk about just kind of um, overall uh, what we did with 2019 and the areas that we focused on from an investment perspective. So we really wanted to focus on, on three main areas, uh, professional grade functionality, that's that core design uh, tools and workflows that uh, our users uh, use every day. We're also talking about connected workflows and how Inventor can connect to the Autodesk Cloud platform and, and really bring value to our customers uh, beyond the desktop. And then overall, we'll talk about this Inventor experience, whether that's feedback directly from customers through the ideas page or customer engagement, or just how we're refreshing commands and enhancing things inside of Inventor to have really um, just a delightful experience as you guys are using the tool. And then we'll obviously talk about how to get the update and handle any, any Q&A. You know, before we really get started, one of the things I like to talk about is just how we've changed our delivery with Inventor. And I have Inventor and Vault icons on here as well, just because um, you might not be aware that Vault and Inventor are part of the same development team here at Autodesk. And so we've got a lot of cohesion, not only in the functionality, as you'd expect, but also in how we deliver updates. So if you look at the last 24 months um, here on the product teams, we've been able to do a lot of really nice things as far as continually providing updates and value to our customers. But what it really means is we've been able to deliver 10 releases of Inventor in the last 24 months. So if you've been a long time Inventor uh, customer, you know, that's, that's almost crazy talk, right? But we've been able to deliver updates about every 12 weeks, um, including major updates as well as these dot updates to give users additional functionality throughout the relief cycle of the product. And what that really means for you as customers is that you've seen over 225 enhancements to the product in 24 months. And so every update, whether it's an incremental dot update or it's a full you know, um, annual release, we're continually providing enhancements based on user feedback 
and market needs. And so that's what's really important to keep in mind is we're not just doing updates for the sake of updates. These updates are really about giving customers new functionality and enhancements um, throughout the life cycle of the product. So let's take a look at what that means for Inventor 2019. So as you've seen before, we kind of have nice themes and, and kind of uh, guide points of, of what we're really looking to deliver when we deliver our products. And these are kind of the, the things that we looked at when we looked at enhancements and feedback and what we wanted to do with Inventor 2019. And it's really about providing the best in class solution for today's design and engineering professionals. You know, we understand that you guys wear a lot of hats, that you're, you're asked to do a lot of different things. And we want to be able to provide a single tool for you to be able to do all of that um, with, with Inventor as your design and engineering solution. So again, we talked about those areas of investment and we really want to help our customers you know, really design great products. And so we really focused on professional grade design and engineering functionality, cloud connected workflows, and the Inventor experience. And really find ways to benefit all of our customers with Inventor 2019. When we talk about professional grade, we're really talking about improvements in design, automation, performance, you know, all of the core things that, that customers need to stay ahead um, and deliver and design great products on time and into market. So performance has been a, a, a large ongoing project for us here on the Inventor team. And we know it's important and we're always looking for ways to improve Inventor performance. And if you've been around or if you've used Inventor 2017 and 18, um, you saw significant performance improvements and we've continued to focus um, in assembly and large assembly drawing workflows. So, you know, in place editing, assembly updates, um, different representations, uh, creating and editing assembly features, uh, assembly pattern selection, and especially things like assembly section views, those 3D section views have been dramatically increased from a performance standpoint. In drawings, we've done a lot of focus around view creation, view updates, and overall drawing navigation. So with Inventor 2019, customers are seeing up to seven times faster in 3D sectioning in their assemblies, a 35% reduction in compute time, and rebuild times up to 80% faster than they've seen um, with prior releases of Inventor. So it's an area that we know is a continual focus for us here on the Inventor team, and we'll continue to you know, the more we, we make Inventor more performant, we know the bigger, more challenging models you guys are going to throw at it. And, and that's great. And so we want to continue pushing the capacity of the designs that we can handle inside of Inventor. As part of that, we've also updated our help content as it relates to large assembly design and best practices. So one of the things that's really, um, really nice here is we've updated the best practices document as well as the large assembly modeling workflows, white papers, inside of the help content. So if you're inside of the Inventor Help Online, you'll have access to these white papers and you'll be able to, to download them and just make sure you're using the, the recommended practices with the enhancements we've made with the product um, over the years. You know, another thing to, that we really talk about, and if you're familiar with the ideas page and you're familiar with um, the community forums, we've also released a state back on our multi-core uh, workflows. So one of the things that's really important is you know if you just take a look at you know moving the multiple threads is is really great for some operations especially things that are really compute intensive tasks but for others you know, there's really more meaningful ways as a software that we can you know provide different strategies to improve performance so we've really looked at a holistic approach um, to performance and we take a look at many techniques whether it's multi-core related or some of them are just not are more code related right. So we've worked with many customers and we've really prioritized the biggest needs and we've sharpened our focus on the important areas. And so if you're, you know, we get a, quite, a lot of questions, a lot about multi-core support and there's a lot of, I guess, misunderstanding or misinformation about what we do or don't do in Inventor. So we, we've started to leverage or we've been leveraging rather uh, multi-core for a lot of things. And I can kind of rattle through some of them, but zoom pan, rotate, ray tracing, mesh generation, um, import of non-inventor data, uh, geometry modeling commands around free form, um, mass property calculations, uh, anything that's around feature recognition and removal, simplification workflows. Um, we've also do a lot of things that maybe are not necessarily multi-core. So we've implemented incremental rendering for 2D and 3D graphics navigation. Um, we do incremental drawing view updates. 
So a lot of these things are really dramatically improving performance. So if you if you followed or asked questions around multi-core, uh, definitely look for that that official statement we have out on the um, the ideas page. But it's just important to understand, you know, that we're looking at an overall approach, not just dumping everything into one one technique or or best practice. And I think another good example of that is as we look at performance, we know um, one of the things we noticed was like with Content Center. If people are adding a lot of Content Center content in their design, we wanted to continually make that experience better, faster, um, definitely more performant. So we actually started doing in-memory caching with Content Center files. So it reduced your, your time waiting for you know, that hosted content to display. So we cache all that content during the session. You know, when you close down that, that session of Inventor, we clear, we clear the cache out. So what it really gives you is as you're using Content Center um, over and over inside of a session, um, you'll, you'll definitely have a much uh, improved performance. So yeah, I've talked a lot about things. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at um, and some performance improvements. So obviously large assemblies are a good focus of, of what we've done here. And when we talk about large assemblies, anything we do here is gonna improve everything down to the part level. So from a, a navigation perspective, we've, we've leveraged things like in, incremental graphics. Being able to do in-place editing and selection has been, again, greatly improved in 2019. Probably one of the biggest areas we've seen um, is this idea of the 3D sectioning. Um, we've done a, a bunch of performance improvements, and then when people got the sectioning, it got to be quite a bear again. And so now we've we've continued that focus on on the 3D sectioning to maintain the uh, the interaction performance that we had seen um, with the other enhancements. The next area we'll really focus on is is how to get that to to the drawing, right? So inside of Inventor 2019. The drawing creation, not only the view creation, but also the view updates has been um, greatly enhanced. So you can see here um, with the previews how much uh, faster and more performant um, you get from a drawing creation perspective. One of the things that's been really nice is we do this incremental drawing update. And what that's really talking about is here you can see we, we update a constraint and it moves a component. Traditionally, we'd have to regenerate all of the views, all the geometry in the views. Now we only have to update just the geometry that moved. Okay, so some good some good overview of our performance enhancements. Another area um, of of investment is really around automation with iLogic. So iLogic is the automation engine that's built into Inventor, and, and right now we're seeing almost twenty percent of Inventor users are leveraging iLogic in their designs, whether they're creating their own rules or they're consuming them with external rules and triggers. So we've invested in multiple ways with iLogic. So we wanted to lower the bar to entry to iLogic to make it more accessible to maybe more non-programmer uh, type of customers. But we also want to improve the top end functionality to make iLogic much more powerful uh, for customers that are really trying to leverage iLogic in, in significant ways in their designs. So one of the things we've done is we've added a bunch of code snippets um, around this new functionality to help people get used to it. So traditionally you've been able to, you know, when you configure a large model, you're hiding or showing or suppressing or unsuppressing a very large model. Well now with iLogic, you have the ability to actually add and delete parts, assemblies and constraints, which means the capacity for automation becomes much larger if you can remove unused components out of the browser, out of the inventor session altogether. Um, to help people get into writing their own rules and leveraging iLogic, we've added, um, you know, 2018 towards uh, with the dot two release, we added things like autocomplete and syntax coloring. Um, we've continued that, that ease of use with capture current model state. So it allows you to capture the current state of the model and, and begin writing rules against that. You can also assign geometry names to faces, edges, or vertices to allow it much easier um, to write rules um, that, that really control and position that geometry. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the, the iLogic functionality in action as well. So here what you'll see um, with iLogic is we have this, this nice conveyor. And if you're just looking at the parameters um, inside of Inventor, you can see I've got this true false for shoot existence. And what you'll notice in the browser is iLogic is actually deleting and adding not only that shoot, but all of the constraints that position it out of the browser and out of active memory. So what that means is, um, as you're writing these rules, and right here is a simple if-then statement, 
if we're saying true, then not only is it adding the component, but it's adding the constraints. And it's adding the constraints based on specific geometry we've defined. We, we have all these snippets built into the 2019 iLogic rule editor, and it really allows users to create much more powerful and much more um, much more powerful rules and how they control their model. And we do it in a way that makes it much easier for users to manage. So here's another example where we're just looking at the parameters that are controlled by iLogic. And we're, we're kind of setting up you know, how this, this particular um, assembly, this, this pilot brewing system is, is really set up. And let's take a look at the casters in this insert constraint. Now, if we're gonna have an option to have you know, the casters on or off, well, if the, the option is to have them on, well, we have to position them. And here you can see with a right click on a face or an edge, I can now assign geometry names. So here we can call this the mate face. And what that means is when you're writing a rule, specifically with a constraint or how to position a component, now it's much, much easier to define that. So here you'll see we're adding a constraint and we actually define it to that face edge or that caster edge that we named from a geometry perspective. Another area um, that we continue to develop is around model-based definition and 3D annotations. So with 2018, um, we released model-based definition for parts and assemblies. And now what we're seeing is um, that we're able to take and continue to develop or build out these, um, these workflows with model-based definition and 3D annotations, really help users that are getting into this, this paperless workflow and this, this world of PMI and model-based definition. And we've added um, this nice face coloring as part of the tolerance. Um, so as you're adding your model-based definition, it can actually guide you um, with face status coloring to let you know what's underdefined, overdefined, um, you know, fully constrained, and, and really help the users make sure they're, they're doing the, the proper 3D annotations and model-based definitions um, within these models. So let's move into a different area of, of Inventor 2019, and this is area of, of Cloud Connected. So Inventor 2019 connects to the Autodesk Cloud in ways that allow users to collaborate, design, and communicate in new and powerful ways. So our goal is to be able to take um, and find ways to connect to the Autodesk Cloud Platform in ways to give customers real benefit. You know, we want to make sure that they're able to leverage their designs beyond the desktop with simple, secure, and powerful workflows. And that's really the goal of, of our connected initiatives. So one great example is, this, is these shared views. And I know we've worked with many of you across the globe on, throughout this, uh, this process. And at AU, we had roundtables. And what we found is historically, Inventor had Inventor Connected Design, or these design shares, where you're able to publish a graphic file um, to, you know, to a to the A360 drive, um, you had some functionality, but if you're an AutoCAD user, you were using Simple Share. If you were a Revit user, you were using you know, C4R or something different. And so what we wanted to do is have a single component across all Autodesk products that gave users the same experience. So I, I can proudly say that um, the Inventor, the AutoCAD, um, Alias, the Max, you know, the Dell Cam teams, we all worked together and we built a single component across all of our, our product lines. And what this means is you are able to curate and share a viewable of your design data to the Autodesk viewer. We give you a unique URL that you can share with people. And by default, it expires after 30 days. You can extend that, um, but it allows people that, that you share it with, whether they're on a mobile device, a browser, they do not need any Autodesk tool. They just need um, access to a browser and that unique URL and they can view, comment, and markup in the Autodesk Viewer. And the great thing is that activity or the, that feedback from your other stakeholders is fed right back into your design tool, whether it's Inventor or AutoCAD or Vault or what have you. So let's go ahead and take a look um, at what this is. And, and you know, I've shown some videos. We're gonna, we're gonna step um, a little bit more dangerously and I'm gonna, let's, let's show this live. So I'm gonna hop into Inventor. And the, the biggest thing we talk about with shared views is this idea of how you can share exactly what you want. We're taking a look at what's inside of, of the canvas, if you will. So here I've got this design. So if I'm taking advantage of 
design views or levels of detail or even simply you know right clicking and, and suppressing or hiding a component I can take just what I is in my my screen area and that's all I want to share so I'm going to go to this collaborate tab in Inventure 2019 and I'm going to click the shared views button so what this does is I'm going to go ahead and create a new shared view it gives me the ability to name it so I'll just name it the Kativ AVA and here I have some options for additional uh, security so I can hide component names I can hide part properties you know if you don't want people to have access to even that data you can turn that off and when I hit share what's happening is it's actually taking a look at my my CAD geometry and it's converting it to a graphic file so there's no CAD geometry that's being passed up to the cloud so what you'll see here is um, on the bottom right I can continue to designing and working as it's processing uh, this this share this design share so again this is a, a decent size assembly and so it's going to go ahead and process this and when it's done it's going to give me a few options so one is I can view it in the browser or I can also copy the link so I'm going to copy the link and I'm actually going to send that over to, to Nigel but I'm also going to go ahead and open it in the browser while I've got it here so I open it in the browser and you'll see it's just the Autodesk viewer and here I've got this Kativ AVA file that I published. Now what's nice here is, you know, like I said, I shared that with, with Nigel. I can actually choose when I share this to disable the ability to section, explode, um, turn off the model browser, um, and also turn off a measure. But I'm going to leave all those things on, on. And here you'll see it's a unique URL. So it's not like I can just go to the Autodesk Viewer and do a search for Kativ AVA and I'd find it. You need access to this specific URL. So once this is in here, um, and you share this with people, they have the ability to come in here with comments, and you see Nigel actually made one. And again, he could have done this on his iPad, on his phone, um, anything with a browser, and now he has access to all this markup. So it's great that I can see it in the, in, inside of the viewer session. That's, that's awesome, right? But as a designer, what's more important to me is I'm an inventor, and I simply hit refresh, and as I'm designing or doing work here, you can see here's that comment that Nigel posted for me. So as I'm designing, I get that feedback directly inside of Inventor. I can select this feedback, and it'll take me to the browser, right to that, that same thing we've shown. If I stay inside of Inventor, I can mark it as resolved. I can actually reply to this and you know, post that back to my collaborative session inside of my shared view. I also have some management capabilities. When I talk about management capabilities, what I mean is I can come in here and on this particular one, if I click this, I can view that in the browser. I can copy the link and share it with somebody else. I can extend beyond the 30 days of, of how long the share is available, or I can simply delete it. So you've got some, some nice things to do here as you're interacting with the shared view okay so hopefully that's something that you guys will find value in and again it's it's across the product lines it's not just inventor it's inventor autocad vault max um, all the dell cam products infraworks etc so it, it's really nice to see um, that that ability to collaborate with stakeholders um, in a very simple and direct way across all artists products another cloud connected um, entitlement that subscribers are getting is Autodesk Drive. So unlike things like you know Google Drive or Dropbox or what have you, this is Autodesk hosted and it's CAD aware. And what that means is if I were to drop a DWG file of XREFs in this, it would say, hey, those have XREFs and it would grab them. And it gives you the ability to access your Autodesk cloud storage as if it were a network drive um, on your computer. So when I'm going through Windows Explorer, I'm doing through standard Save As dialogs, my Autodesk Cloud Storage appears as a standard network drive. And so I have access to that data as long as I'm connected. So it's not syncing. I'm actually working live off my cloud data for my desktop product. And then one of the things we unveiled um, at Autodesk University last November was the AnyCAD integration between Autodesk Inventor and Autodesk Fusion 360. So this is still continuing as a technology preview in Inventor 2019, and we're continuing to, to add functionality both on the Fusion side and on the Inventor side. And what this really enables 
is the ability for both Fusion 360 users and Inventor users to work on a common design with any CAD workflows and get live updates um, from bi-directionally throughout the design process. So if you are working with, uh, with, the, with maybe a manufacturing or design shop that's using Fusion 360, you can now send them your native Inventor design or put it on Fusion Team, and they can access it um, for machining purposes and, and vice versa. You can, you can accept a .fusion design file and bring that into your Inventor design um, without having to worry about any, any changes um, being lost as, as concept design work is changed and that's being consumed in Inventor. The, the last kind of big bucket area we'll talk about is this idea of the inventor experience. And we talk about this a lot, but you know, we launched the ideas forum a few years ago and it really allows customers to enter their requirements and enhancements and things that they want to see inside of the product and have the rest of the community vote on it. Not only that, but you also get the ability to interact directly with the inventor product development organization, our, our software architects, our developers, our product managers, we're on the ideas page constantly, and we're constantly asking customers uh, more details around what they're asking for, why, what value it brings them, and just really getting a good understanding of, of the value of, of what we can continue putting in the product. So everything from sketching to part modeling, tube and pipe, frame generator, every part of Inventor is being worked on and tweaked throughout the year based on user feedback. So that's one of the big areas that we, we continue um, to, to push with customers and just for reference, um, with Inventor 2019, there's over 25 additional customer ideas that were developed and implemented in, inside of the product, okay? So one of the one areas we'll talk about, you saw with 2018, we did some enhancements to the, to the whole command. Um, there was, you know, some of the, the different things as far as end conditions, um, you know, how different hole creation and, and, and these different fragment edges could be handled. Well, what we've done with 2019 is we've completely refreshed the whole command. If you remember 2018, we refreshed the measure command, the browser, and the whole command is following that same panel UX concept. So what it really allows users to do is have this active panel with, with all the commands um, or all the functionality of the command within it. And we allow for the ability to do presets. And it's one of the biggest feedback we got from customers is they have standard holes that they use in their organization all the time. And um, they want to be able to predefine or have presets for what those those whole options would be, so they can just pick them from a drop down list. And presets you'll start seeing uh, throughout a, a variety of Inventor commands based on the technology we put in place with the whole command. So the whole command now is is faster and smarter. It infers whole placement um, from your interactions. You don't have to create a sketch first and then go into the whole command. You just hop into the whole command and you have access to any underlying sketch that it creates or that you have predefined. You can also apply dimensions, concentric constraints, you know, all without creating that sketch. And you can switch between the feature editing and the sketch editing without ever leaving the command, okay? So a great way to, to really show that is to just show it. So the, the whole command here, you'll see we go into the whole command without any predefined sketches. And as we, we place these holes, we have one better graphic preview but you'll notice the interaction with the panel uh, becomes much more straightforward for the users. So again, one of the things you'll see here is we're actually defining some dimensions and locations. We can actually go between the actual feature command and the actual sketch environment. So now I'm in the controlling sketch. So if I have to add constraints or any other alignment, I can do that. So without having to exit the command, I can go between sketch and feature and help define my whole locations uh, much more quickly and easily um, than ever before. Here you'll see we'll just add a few final holes for some of these rails. And again, I think it's pretty self-evident just um, what this experience, again, it looks and feels uh, much more like we've done when we refreshed other commands, and you'll continue seeing this in the future um, as we refresh existing commands and add new functionality. Some more um, enhancements. Uh, so nearly 40% of Inventor customers use sheet metal every day. So we've continued to look at sheet metal and ways we can enhance it. Um, you know, these are from, from big things that we've done with multi-body and multi-body uh, rules and different thicknesses to different manufacturing requests. In this case, we've done some things around laser weld relief shapes, 
uh, face and corner treatment enhancements, um, all things that, that customers have been asking for to really match up with their, their manufacturing and fabrication processes. Um, another area that we get a lot of feedback on are the specialized environments like tube and pipe and frame generator. So um, you know, keep your eye on these areas because, again, we have a lot of customers using these areas of functionality and they're areas we're going to continue to look at investing in. And one of the, the highlights here for 2019 are things like lock hose length. So that underlying spline that controls your hose length when you do a flexible hose, you know, if you have a component that moves like a cylinder, a hydraulic cylinder, um, your hose length would sometimes change. Well, now you can lock the hose length so it'll actually tighten or loosen based on that component movement and really allow for some, some nice uh, functionality. And you can actually lock hose length um, and spline length um, as needed. Some other inventor ideas. Um, so we've added additional information um, when you choose um, browser information. So here you'll see a bunch of um, offset and thickness features in the browser. Well, if you don't take the time to, to name features, now it'll automatically add some additional um, descriptions so it's easier to locate, find, and edit these um, downstream. For the assembly constraints with the insert constraint, you know, it adds a concentric and coincident mate. Now you have a, a nice icon where you can simply lock and it locks rotation as well. So again, just one less operation that you have to jump through in order to really um, kind of lock down some of your assembly motion. We've out, you know, one of the, the things that uh, users sometimes got frustrated with was these axial constraints um, and being able to kind of flip the mate on the fly. And now we have the ability to do that just with these opposed align and undirected options um, inside of those axial constraints. Let's take a look again at some of these, just because sometimes I think seeing an action really helps define what we've done here. So the first thing we'll take a look at is um, the lock hose length. So again, this is not uncommon. You've got your hydraulic uh, hoses in here. So we're going to go in and we're actually going to define the hose length and we're going to lock it. So now you just have this parametric dimension value we'll set to 800. And you'll notice how the spline changes and flexes based on the, the, the length that it is. So we'll lock both of these. So again, you know you're going to buy standard length hose. So now when these are done and we move this assembly, you'll see that the hoses either stretch or kind of um, you know stretch or loosen based on the, the set hose length. So here's that um, that constraint, that insert constraint now with the lock icon. So obviously when we're putting the, the tire um, on the rim, you want to lock that rotation. It's just simply an icon now in the dialog and it locks that rotation. Now when we do these axial constraints here, um, now we have the opposed aligned and you can see it is simply flipping um, and then we can simply lock that in. So let's go ahead and just do one final constraint, which is just a standard one we've had, just to lock that in place. So again, these types of enhancements are really about saving users time, you know, incremental time in, in mouse clicks uh, throughout your design process. And those are really where, um, as they add up over time, you know, we, we really want our users to, to really see these, these updates, saving them time um, and effort on a daily basis. From more of, um, I guess, an administrative standpoint, we've added this Migrate Custom Settings tool. So if you've done a lot of work to customize your application options, your user interface, other things, um, and then every time you install Inventor, you have to do a fair amount of rework, you could always export your options as an XML file and, and you know, save those and bring them across versions. But now you have this Migrate Custom Settings. It takes a look at your, your settings from prior releases and just migrates them over into 2019. Now, the first time you launch 2019, it'll bring up this dialog. Don't worry if you, if you said no or you didn't do it. You can always go back and execute this command later on if, if you do want to migrate these. So administrators now have additional control um, over these initial options and their deployments and how they set those up for their users. Another request we'd get in just from an accessibility standpoint is a lot of the customization that people wanted to do with their colors. So there was kind of this back door way that you could edit colors and color schemes. And what we really found is we needed to make it much more accessible and available for customers. So we now have this color schema editor and it allows users to access this directly from the application options under the color tab. And all your customizations are saved into the application XML file. So again, they can be migrated from version to version. They can be shared across organizations. So if you have anything um, 
where you need to adjust your colors based on you know color blindness or preference, um, you have the ability to do so and also to distribute them throughout your organization. A lot of these other kind of nice things that we, we did based on user feedback. Um, so we've, we've had the variable radius uh, helical curve before, but it was very, um, it was more complex than it needed to be, right? You had to do a lot from a, from a formula standpoint. Now you just define height and pitch. Graphically, you have the ability to, to select this geometry and define it um, either in just a simple almost spreadsheet like graph on the dialog or out of the graphic area, you can actually just drag the glyphs and resize as needed. Um, we have the ability to add an inverted fillet now. Um, again, uh, we had users request to do a negative value in, uh, on a fillet. Uh, most developers are not big fans of negative value. So we worked with customers to really understand what, what the ask was. And now we have this great ability just to add a negative value fillet, either for a manufacturing clearance or if you're going to you know, replicate things even like in a woodworking situation um, with a, like a router edge. You now have the ability just to do a negative, um, uh, sorry, an inverted fillet um, on those either convex or concave edges. We've added some additional options inside of the direct editing command. So now when you select like a slot or any type of cutout, instead of moving the entire, um, the entire shape, now you can blend that geometry and, and really helps with, with some very complex um, geometry that you might be looking to define or, or edit directly. So again, here's, here's some highlights of some of those. Um, just some overall part modeling. So the first thing we'll take a look at here with this direct editing, we'll turn off automatic blending, and you'll see it, it moves that single face, which is great. With automatic blending, I can actually grab and move the entire slot. Let's take a look at something a bit more complex. Without automatic blending on, um, there's gonna be some challenges because you have a lot of fillets and blends um, at the bottom and the sides of that. Now, with automatic blending turned on, you can see you can move that face and it automatically um, handles all of the, the blending in with the additional geometry surrounding that face. Here's an example of the inverted fillet. So obviously here, if you're doing it to represent um, even you know, like a Welby type geometry, but also another area where it's extremely handy is somewhere like in this area. So historically, this might be something you'd have to do with a, with a swept cut or something like that. But now you can just do that inverted fillet and it represents kind of a ball end mill kind of cleaning up that edge, right? So that's kind of the highlights of Autodesk Inventor 2019. Um, I definitely wanted to uh, hope you guys are excited about it as, as we are here on the Autodesk team. And if, if you if you want to get access to it, um, it, it should be in your Autodesk account. If it's not there today, it'll, it'll definitely be there soon. And we also have the, you'll get the alerts on the Autodesk desktop app that Inventor 2019 is available. So keep your eyes peeled, um, either with the desktop app if you have it installed or log into your Autodesk account and, and make sure it's available. Again, we're rolling out um, all of the languages globally um, as we speak, but um, uh, many of those versions are available for customers today. With that being said, um, one of the things I can't echo uh, enough is this ability of, to, to really interact directly with the product team here on Inventor. So we have the Inventor feedback community, which gives you access to alpha and beta builds of the software. Um, really nice interaction with different development projects we're working on with Inventor. Um, by all means, sign up and, and take a look and interact with us and, and help kind of get your hands dirty on the software well before it's released. Uh, the Inventor Ideas page is just a nice place where you can take a look at what other users are requesting and put your own ideas up there. Vote for other people's ideas and, and also put your own up there. And just make sure that your feedback and your voice is heard. And it's always nice, um, especially in the Ideas page. We're super transparent about ideas we've accepted and implemented. And you can see an idea come from something that somebody posted to us putting it in the software six months later. So something that's very cool and encourage everybody to take part in. So with that, Nigel, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Q&A. I know uh, that you and Chris had been handling questions throughout the presentation. Are there any uh, specific questions that we want to highlight? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Can you hear me, Lauren? Nigel? Yeah, can you hear me, Lauren? Yes. Yep, now I can. Sorry. Awesome. No worries. Um, let me uh, let me go ahead and take a look at some of these questions. Like I mentioned earlier, um, if you do have any, go ahead and type them into the chat panel at any time, um, and we can uh, go ahead and answer a couple of those. So uh, 
let's take a look at one that just uh, that just came in. Um, in regards to changing some of the colors to some of the application options, um, with constraint face colors, is that something you can customize now? Um, customers mentioning that sometimes it's a little hard to discern between the light blue and the dark blue um, with some of those face colors. Um, so with the constraints, um, yes, those those colors, if they're, let me take a step back. I'm trying to think specifically of, of constraint faces in the assembly environment. Um, I do not believe that we can face, we can adjust those colors, but I would have to dive pretty deep into the color scheme editor to be sure. I don't know if you know Chris or not. Uh, not right off the top of my head. But we can we can definitely check on that for you. Certainly, certainly. Another good question about some of the, the shared views. Um, in regards to that URL, does that URL change when model the model gets updated in Inventor? How, how does you know updating the model um, and saving new versions, so on and so forth, affect the shared view itself? So it was actually, I was typing that out, but uh, I'll just answer it. So that URL is, is static. So it's a unique URL that's published once uh, based on the design that you had. So any comments or markups or anything like that is they're all housed inside of that that one unique URL, and it's a way to track all of the comments and changes, kind of a threaded conversation. If you make any design changes and um, you you want to publish that, that would be a new URL with a new set of comments. So um, so it is a geometry updates. If you republish them, would be a new URL but it also would be a new set of, of comments and markups as well. Cool, cool. Um, let's take a look. Um, how do the current iLogic improvements work with legacy iLogic assemblies and parts? Um, can I continue to use those, or is there a change that I need to make? Yeah, so you can continue to use those. Um, obviously, it's it's going to take advantage of the rules you wrote. If you want to take advantage of the new functionality, um, you'd obviously just have to put those new iLogic rules um, or new iLogic code into those rules to do the add delete versus say suppress unsuppress. Um, so it still is still you know it it won't it won't um, I guess supersede any legacy rules, right? But mm -hmm. it, you need to make sure that if you want to move it forward, you can open up and just edit that rule and, and add the new uh, functionality. Yep. Also, I want to make um, a note for everyone, too. This is a question that came in, but uh, I think it's just important to let everyone know. If you want to move to Inventor 2019 um, and you are using Vault, uh, make sure you migrate that Vault as well. Um, Vault needs to be the same version or newer than all of the CAD tools. Um, I've seen it a couple times where people just install a new version of the CAD tool and not move the vault. Um, you're going to have some issues. So I just want to make sure that uh, that everyone knows about that. Going through a couple more. Let's see what else. I know Lauren and, uh, and Chris are looking at the questions as well. Brian Kelly <laughs> mentioned some issues are an understatement. It is true. It is a total lockout of your CAD files. So um, make sure you make that uh, noted. Um, this is a great question. I know Chris um, answered it in the chat, though. But um, for those of you people who maybe aren't looking at the chat, um, can steps or multi-body IPT files be attached to shared views? Um, how would I? Sh what's the best way to go ahead and share an actual file um, to somebody else as opposed to just a viewable? So that's something where um, where Autodesk Drive can be really helpful because you can actually, um, you know, from within your your local machine um, through Windows Explorer, you can just drag and drop a file into your Autodesk Cloud Storage. Once it's in there, if you go into um, you know, go online to your Autodesk Drive storage through your browser. You can you can share that out with with different people, right? So, um, if you're looking just for a, a way to share your design data, um, Autodesk Drive might be a might be a great option for you. Certainly, and if you are using Vault, there were some really uh, great improvements to some of this collaborative aspect uh, that we showed last week. Um, things like the project sync functionality. 
Um, so if you know there is a need to be able to share files outside of your organization uh, to people who aren't necessarily within your network, like immediate network, um, go ahead and take a look at that, or you know, go ahead and shoot me an email, and I can get you that information um, for all of that. Um, question: Can you migrate from Vault 2017 directly to Vault 2019? Do you want to answer that, Lauren? You sure can. Um, so. We, we've done a lot of work with, with migration across versions. And, and honestly, once you really get past, you know, 2014, 2015, um, you know, you can, you can migrate over across multiple versions. You don't have to two-step um, from, you know, 2017 to 2018, then 2018 to 2019, for example. You could go right from 2017 to 2019. Yep. Yep, yep. yep. If, you, if you're moving more than just those two versions, um, there are some caveats. Um, depending on what version you are on and what version you want to go to, um, definitely reach out to us and we can help get, uh, get you all squared away, whether that's giving you advice on what to do or even helping you do the migration ourselves. Um, more than happy to do that. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and move along here. I think that's just about all of the questions. Um, if we didn't get to yours, probably it's more specific to your actual workflow. Um, I'll go ahead and follow up with you afterwards, um, if that's the case. But I'll give everyone you know, another 30 seconds to go ahead and ask any more questions um, within here. Lauren, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the beta program as well um, while we're waiting for these last questions? Yeah, so the, the Autodesk feedback community is really a great opportunity um, if if you are interested in taking a look at new development projects we're working on, uh, not only new releases of the software, but a lot of times we'll have projects that aren't necessarily tied to a release, but we're really looking at exploring uh, new areas of functionality and, and getting customer validation. Um, Model-based definition is a great example of that. That was a project we had um, that wasn't necessarily tied to any specific release, but it really gave customers a chance to try out this type of project and how they would use it. And it really helped shape the direction of what became the final release product inside of Inventor 2018. So um, if, you, if you are interested, I would definitely encourage you um, to take a, go ahead and sign up um, for the in Inventor feedback community. Um, and it's the easiest way to find it, just go to beta.autodesk.com and you know, kind of you'll, you'll have to sign up and then ask for a you know, request for a particular project, in this case, Inventor. Um, or Vault, and you, you get that early access and, and really direct um, engagement with the product development organization. Yep, and it's, it's awesome. Sometimes, you know, even um, we hold similar-ish events um, at our facilities, sometimes with Lauren and the rest of the project team to go over some of the stuff that they're working on. Um, maybe we'll see one of those this year. We don't know yet. So uh, we'll figure that one out. Um, sim uh, kind of last question before we let everyone go. Um, is kind of off topic, but kind of on topic. Um, anything in regards to things like the InCAD functionality or HSM that fit, you know, directly into Inventor? So I, I don't know uh, there what's new specifically, but I do know for, for those that are product design and manufacturing collection customers, um, we've done some pretty neat things. You know, last year we included um, CAM and simulation as part of the collection with, with the NAS Tran NCAD and HSM. Uh, this year for our product design and manufacturing customers, we're actually uh, including nesting uh, functionality. And that nesting obviously um, helps nest all your, your sheet metal components and it also helps um, send those out to um, through manufacturing through HSM integration. Awesome, great. And I think that should be everything. Um, Lauren, thanks for being here. Same with you. Uh, you, Chris, answering the questions on the back end, uh, noticing you frantically typing responses. So thank you both for being on. No problem. And again, I'd like to thank everybody for joining. And, and on behalf of the uh, Inventor team, um, thank you for being customers. And we always appreciate hearing, hearing feedback and working with all of you. So thanks for having us, Nigel. And uh, have a great day. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see everybody next week for What's New in AutoCAD with uh, product manager on that side as well, Marcus O'Brien. So if you are an AutoCAD user, maybe, you know, decades old AutoCAD user, maybe you could see some of the new ups, uh, updates that they've made 
um, to the product as well as the packaging for the product. It's a little bit different. We'll go over those next week. Thanks, everyone, for being on board. Um, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you for AutoCAD. What's new in AutoCAD 2019? Thanks, everybody.